morning guys today is december 6th and i have lab right now so it's almost winter break so we just have three more exams until the semester ends so i'm super excited for that and i'm just powering through these next two weeks So today we're doing a class 3 restoration on the distal of maxillary anterior teeth. I'm gonna put on my rubber dam and I'll show you guys the rest of the process. Okay, so my rubber dam is in place. I'm gonna fill this tooth as well as these two teeth today. So yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. Here's my application of the acid etch. We use this clear strip to separate the tooth from the tooth adjacent to it so that we don't etch and bond the other tooth. Okay, so here I am restoring the tooth and this is my professor, Dr. Garcia. She's super nice, offers great feedback and checks up on me after every few steps. In dental school, you'll have a professor assigned to your lab row and they'll always be there to answer your questions and give feedback. If we go to the lab after hours, there's no faculty, so I try to get any questions I have answered during these scheduled lab sessions. Okay, so this is my prep on number six. Number six is a canine. I'm not done yet. I just put the material and I cured it, but I still need to polish it and make it all smooth. But yeah, this is how it's looking so far. I know it's a little hard to see. Hi, Bri. Ooh. Okay. Look Very at my long. beautiful prep. Let me see. Ooh. Wow. Number nine? Yes. Yes. Very nice. Very nice, Bri. <laughs> now I'm finishing and polishing the tooth. There's a ton of different instruments and birds that can be used to finish and polish the tooth. Dental school is all about trial and error and figuring the strategy that works for you. Let's see how Nico's doing with his impressions at UPenn Dental. You put the adhesive here? In no. The tray. Put no. adhesive in the tray to fix, yes, to fix the alginate. In general, this hole, these holes can Fix the alginate. We've got our cup measured to four cups, adding some tray adhesion. Send it. Let me help you a little bit. And now you start spreading on the side. Spreading in the opposite of the bowl. Got it. Did you do opposite of the bowl? Yeah. 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 Mix it up. You're working on the lower jaw? Yeah. Don't already set. It's set? Yes. So I have to throw it out? Yes. Oh man. It sets quick. Yeah. Alrighty, round two. Alright, going for it. So on attempt two, I was able to place the impression in the patient's mouth before it hardened like the first time. However, this time I placed the impression too far back into my mannequin's mouth. So I didn't get enough room on the anterior teeth on the top. So I had to redo it. Okay. Yeah. Nicholas. Yep. Let me see, please. Working on it. Okay. So now I'm just waiting for it to set. It's got to change color. Purple, pink to white. Dude, I did it again. The exact same mistake. I'm not giving enough room on the top. Yeah, I don't know how to. I don't know how to. Huh? Yeah. Struggling here on the struggle bus. Struggle bus. Not giving enough room up here. Try number four. I think that's good. It's okay. You see the difference? Yeah. Not enough here though, or is that fine? 
Yeah. Please do it again like that. Okay. Better. Better. Got it. Okay. Better, but do it again. No, better to do it again. Yeah. But better. But better. Okay. Do it again now. Yes. Do it again to to. So it's filled to there fix on the this side. One. Okay. Yes. Didn't get enough material right Can here. You give me to help you? So I gotta do it again. All right, six attempts. This one's good to go. How's it going? It's going. Better? A little better. Good. You guys cut it right at the tray, right? Yeah. So, like, all the way to the flush edge? Yeah. We also have um, scissors from our rubber dam that you can use if you have too much. Hello. <laughs> So to the vlog, <laughs> we're struggling here. Yes, we are. All right, that is the complete maxilla. Little air bubbles, but overall not terrible. And then this is the mandible. We had to create this tongue after we took the impression by putting a napkin under here and adding material, letting it set. Now I'm just trimming off the edges. Right. So the dental impressions we made were to copy the oral tissue and now we're making a dental cast from the impressions. This is done so the dentist can see the relationship of your teeth and gums and create a treatment plan for you. And it's honestly a lot like baking. And now you see me using a dental lab vibrator to vibrate all the air bubbles out of the mixture to prevent air sockets and impurities on our final cast. From there, I place my impression on the vibrator and get my spatula and start scooping the dental cast material onto the impression. Now it's important for your spatula to be touching the impression as it helps vibrate the material into the sockets of the impression. Once our sockets are fully covered, we then get our large spatula and apply more cast material onto our impression until we have a fully coated smooth surface. This material hardens with time, so it's important to be swift and accurate. We then get our Plasdent models, apply a full coat of cast material, and after sandwich them with our impressions. After we wipe the excess off and let our cast sit for about 45 minutes and we're pretty much done. So last class we poured our models, now I'm gonna separate them give them some time to harden up. Since I let them sit too long, they recommend I soak them. It's easier to separate. Solid. This one came out way better. Dude, nice. Now I'm using the spatula to clean off a little air bubbles. It's right here. I'm bugged out about that. So as you heard, my friend Adam had a piece of his central incisor chip off. He was able to fix it though. And now you see me using a Greg 4.5 and I'm just polishing off any impurities and algae accumulations left. Now we're trimming this down. Giving them some flat edges. You can see. Pretty good. And that's the aftermath. So it's currently the day after and I'm in Philly. Today we're craving Colombian empanadas. So we decided to get the ingredients and make some. Um, Nico's Colombian and he put me on. Excited to see how they turn out. The best empanadas out there. Yeah, I am cooking the ground beef and we have the water boiling for the potatoes. So we're creating kind of like a puree for our meat. So I'm gonna blend these tomatoes. I don't want it to be very smooth, so I'm probably gonna blend it a very short time just so it gets nice consistency. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So this is the empanada mixture. I'm gonna be mixing this in with water to make the empanadas. Chopped up some onions over here. And now we have some oil right here. Heating up so we can do a nice little mixture once it heats up. Mm -hmm. Gotta have the Colombian music for the vibes. <laughs> so here we have Kathleen measuring out some empanada mixture, cornmeal. She doesn't want to show her face because she says she doesn't look good. I think she always looks good, but I'm gonna respect her wish and just record over the shoulder. <laughs> Thank you. Stir frying some vegetables, green onion and white onion. We gotta top it with our tomato paste in 
we just added the water to the mix, added some seasoning. Each one of these are gonna be empanadas. All right, now we're mashing up the potatoes and I'm making some aji picante, which is the sauce you dip your empanadas in. Basically some green onions, some regular onions, tomato, cilantro, some Tabasco and some lime. And I put a little bit of water so it blends nice. Part of our IP is going inside our mixture. All right, we just closed up our first one. Looks pretty good. Here we have the empanadas frying in some oil. Kathleen's here forming them. Super nice. So the empanadas are done. We put limes on the side and ají salsa. A with bit of Tabasco as well. Kathleen is going to do a taste test. No. Mm, that's fire. Mm -hmm. mm. Add some lime, side of sahi. That's a bite right there. And a little bit of Tabasco. Mm. 